Well, I'd just like to take a moment and uh, and welcome uh, John Farris to the Fifth Direction community. It's an absolute um, pleasure to, to have you here, brother. Uh, for those that, that don't know John, he's a, a iconic Aussie drummer and, and founder of uh, a founding member of, of In Excess, but so much more than that, a, a, a songwriter, a producer, um, and, and, and a master of many things, which we'll, we'll talk about um, a little later in this conversation. But firstly, John, welcome. Thanks, Asher. Yeah. Nice so. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and uh, I guess yeah, we um, we met watching our boys play tennis, which is such a beautiful thing in in kind of village um, community life. Just to kind of be, be sitting there um, in our cars, um, watching the boys play, and 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 getting to talking. So it's a beautiful thing that this can actually happen as a result of that. Yeah, look, we are very blessed, um, and you're absolutely right. I mean, it you know it is never a second that I don't appreciate just how blessed I am to have such beautiful children and, and my wife and, and um, my life. And um, you're absolutely right. You know, just to, just to acknowledge that, you know, um, and then, and then on top of that, everything else is a gift. So, how, you know, it just keeps getting better. <laughs> no, look, absolutely. And I guess that gives me a, a good place to, to, to kick off, John, because I was going to ask you, what's what's alive for you right now i mean um you know where, where are you at maybe you can start kind of physically um geographically and then kind of expand that out into where you are spiritually emotionally you know what's alive for you where, where are your passions <laughs> right okay. now at this moment uh right so what's my favorite color um <laughs> just really simple questions um well let's start with my geo location i'm in byron bay here in northern new south wales um and, uh, you know, I'm turning 62 this year. Um, I've spent a pretty riotous sort of life uh, in a rock and roll band. Um, you know, I taught myself uh, music when I was very little. And because uh, I had two older brothers who were into music as well, uh, it just was a very musical house. And so I'm very blessed to, uh, to have had that experience. Um, you know, my parents are very nurturing uh, in every level. My dad was in the Second World War uh, in the uh, Royal Navy. Um, as a young, as a young naval, uh, you know, uh, student, um, and moved to Australia after what, and I met my uh, mother, and then uh, yeah, so I was born in 1961. I've traveled most of my life. I've lived overseas in all sorts of different places and spent a lot of time mainly away from Australia. Um, but um, I always found Australia was my home and felt that um, the land, I don't know, there's something about the land that it's home here on this planet. <laughs> um, but during my journey through all the travels and all the experiences and wild stuff that went on, which there was a lot of, um, you know, I, I did a lot of uh, soul searching and that was really uh, enabled through the meditation and focus through music. Um, and perhaps nothing that anyone could, um, you know, equate to a, a you know, a, a formal type of meditation, but but through the focus and, and the, um, the expression through music, I just developed my own. So everything I've sort of done has, has, has really been effectively just my own guidance uh, and my ability to to take on the higher guidance, if that makes sense. Oh, no, so yeah. I, I'm, 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 yeah, I, I've just always been um, constantly aware of something else and that I didn't really feel like this was my home home. I just know that I've come from somewhere else. And as I get older now, I'm able to really face that with a great deal of ease um, because I'm able to um, sit, you know, in my own property here and uh, just get a lot more um, grounded with nature. Um, and I'm, I feel more comfortable being in that state, which I think is my natural state which isn't really sort of very easy to to um, mingle 
with, you know, people who aren't on, on that same sort of trajectory or, or uh, like-mindedness, you know. So um, I have become a bit of a recluse of, of late and I love it. <laughs> I, I can really love it a lot. Um, but, you know, everything uh, through the 70s and the 80s and the 90s and the zeros and, and even the 10s has all been extremely full on for me. And, and um, uh, I, I'm just really grateful that I, I'm still extremely intact and I got up the hill and I got up the mountain and I climbed the, the peak and I got down the other side safely. <laughs> no, that's so all, all the middle bit uh, is, is what people might know about my career or might not know about it. They might know the music. They may have rubbed shoulders with someone who has or – but that's all my my experience and my journey. But, but what I really um, want to just give major thanks to is the amount of people I've met and the types of situations that I've been in, um, with like a lot of a lot of uh, very 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 large audiences of people and gatherings, which I really look at as fellowships. So, you know, on one one side, you know, I've got the music and all these sort of ambitions to do with this third dimensional reality here on Earth. Um, and you could say aspirations, all these things that I've, I've met and, and 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 embraced, were really just a banana or a carrot and a stick for something else. You know, um, we're all put in these positions. Whatever our position is, is where we're supposed to be. And for me, it was it was about fellowship with lots of people. So. The joining of of thousands and hundreds of thousands of people at the same time, all focusing on something, and the power of that was just unbelievable. So I got addicted to that, um, and uh, when I say addicted to it, I mean I, I you know I love it passionately. So I was always on stage, present as well, uh, even when I was maybe under the influence of certain substances. But you know. It's all just another type of presence for me. Um, so I just wanted to paint that little background a little bit because I've had an extraordinary life and, and um, now I'm just really enjoying, as it all catches up with me, to enjoy the, 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 the complicated yet simple thing of listening to the rustling of leaves or a bird in the background or, or, or anything that mm. might be... Um, ordinarily taken for granted is of huge importance to me. Oh, well, thank, thank you for, for painting that picture, John. And, you know, th there's, I just want to go back to something you said earlier on, and that's this idea for me. You know, we often talk to, to people in our community about finding your passion, finding your purpose. And, um, you know, a lot, a lot of people are challenged by that. You know, what am I here to do? What, what, what am I on this planet to do? And for me, when I, when I understand your story, it seems like drumming, you know, it, it almost feels like it, it's almost a shamanic bridge across to, to, to other, other worlds and other languages and the language of the yeah. soul, isn't it? It's, um, and, and you found that, you found that so early in, in life, John, like I, from, from reading about your life, you were kind of auditioning for bands as a drummer at like nine years old. It's like, yeah. it seemed like this clarity of, of, of what you were here to do just came through so early and now and, and now I hear you as a 62 year old man and you, you're almost saying the same thing you know it's like that you're talking about these um different aspects aspects of your life and and drumming appears to me to be the the constant and almost the language between this world and the next it, look that's that's beautiful to to um to hear you say that because it's kind of what I think, think about drumming which is really amazing because I was understand and um realize that that we're we live in an illusory uh, an illusion you know we, we live in an illusory world um that you know nothing's changed since i was a child except all the bullshit in between you know so for my earliest memories i have actually some very early memories which are quite unusual and I think those memories, three or four or five of them, are what it's almost like it's almost like it's ne they never go 
away. I can't understand where they're from, but as I do understand where they're from, it it it's just like it happened yesterday. So that that is just a really interesting thing to say because um, because time and space is an illusion. But with drumming, you know, timing is everything. So measurement of time and the the keeping of time was my job. Well, it, it still is. So I've interpreted it a different way through drumming, yet that's what all of us do in some regard. Everything cycles, you know. So there's beats, there's a heartbeat. And how many beats per second? And how many beats per minute? I mean, we, we, we measure song tempos and beats per minute. That's a cycle. So everything's cyclical. And what's amazing is the more time and the better time and the absolute accuracy of time I can keep erases time because mm. I'm in a meditative state keeping time. I love that. I love that. So you move from a, a sort of time bound reality <laughs> to, a, to yeah. a time, time less reality. Yeah. So I anchor, I'm not saying I, I'm like great. And I, I mean, this is God's work. You know, this is, this is a divine that I'm recognizing and loving through me that's coming through me that I'm blessed to to recognize it first of all mm. and I'm I'm blessed that I'm able to enjoy it and and not be embarrassed to say what it is you know that that's the greatest gift that I've had is this wonderful life where you know I, I'm a system breaker I'm a system buster you know I I I'm a, I can be a very good boy and follow rules no problem you know but I'm very good at breaking them <laughs> And my own rules too, mm. you know. Um, but time is an illusion. Um, but yet it's it's a discipline to keep time with drumming. So I just I guess I'm just trying to sort of express the irony in everything. Well, it's the paradox, we isn't it, John? You know, it's it's the yeah. paradox in life that there you are, you know, rigidly keeping time in order to break yeah. time. In order to break, well, yeah. you know, pick, you know, you're keeping a beat. So I'm, I'm full, um, in touch with the audience. Um, so my drum, when I'm on stage, or when I'm playing drums. Now, when you're in a really big concert or even a small concert, but you know, you've got a good sound system, the microphone or the microphones, depending on how we, we mic up the, the bass drum, that right foot has an extraordinary amount of power because as you hit that drum. You know, the whole room is like a percussion shock wave of very low frequencies and some high frequencies. So there's a lot of power in that. Um, and when you can see the results of what you're doing, how an audience as a mass will move or it'll it'll heave or pump or it'll it'll they'll they'll just you know, you can you can dispel and an audience will start to look around and, and, and then, then you can get them to lock back in again. That's all part of the, the meditation I'm talking about. So when you look at your audience, the audience is the act and we're the act and we're facing each other, you know. And what's happening there is this magic. Mm. Oh, but through the, the third world eyes, it's about, you know, promotion and it's about, you know, how many how many people did you get, and, you know, and, and how many encores. I mean, that's the third world thing. But what's really happening is a coming together of, of humans uh, and, and other beings who probably can't see all in this, this amazing fellowship. And, and that's the part that, that, and I've had people say to me that have seen things when, when they just sort of phase out a little bit watching the show, like they just start to see stuff which they couldn't explain and, and I see it all the time, um, but I just get so used to it. And I'm just really, really lucky that uh, I left school early and I wasn't indoctrinated to the point where I couldn't get back out of that indoctrination. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I, so I don't play much really anymore. Um, I, I still like to write, um, but I'm just spending most of my time um, doing a lot of reflection and, and a lot of inner, inner work. Um, mm. 
And mm. I'm just just love life. You know, I think right now is the best time to be alive. Um, and um, I, I'm a great believer that, and, and I know that life is eternal. So go easy on yourself. You know. Oh look, it's 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 a beautiful yeah, it, it, it's it's a beautiful it's, idea. You're either here or you're somewhere else. I mean, what does it matter? You, it's all good. Yeah, you know, no, and and I felt they... that in you. I felt that in you, John, when when we first, you know, connected. Oh, really? There was a, just a certain lightness and a certain joy, and um, it was a pleasure to speak. Oh, really? To you. Yeah, oh, no, I mean, absolutely. I'm just sitting in my car, you know, like. A... Yeah, well, you but you're sitting in your car watching your son play tennis in, in, in right. you know in in the sunshine and, and yeah. what can be it's it's just a beautiful thing but I, I wanted to take you back well firstly I just love that idea about um this relationship that you were kind of talking about in terms of those big crowds and it almost feels like the drum the bass drum is like you're creating the bridge creating the language for that for that relationship to really kind of pulsate and and hum and it's it's just I, I could feel it and just listening to you speaking I I think you um if I'm not mistaken, there, there was a, there was a concert, um, I think it was Madison square garden and, and you, 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 it, it sort of hit you in a different way. I think maybe afterwards when you were, I don't know if you, you can recognize what I'm talking about here, but I think there was this, maybe it was a you know, very large crowd, Madison square garden. And, and you talk a little bit um, that after that concert, you sort of realized a bit more what was going on here, you know? Look, um, you know, I'm just writing a piece for um, a book we're doing at the moment, and I chose to sort of discuss the earlier part of our career. Um, but, but I really like to call it life, not a career. But but um, you know, one of the things that was really important for me, I found, was to just don't look back. You know, like you have a goal. Don't be surprised that you're going to reach it. You know, it shouldn't be like... My God, I can't believe I, I did. You know, why should that be surprising to anybody? If you put your heart and soul and mind and and and, and your conviction and, and everything to it, what you know, we manifest everything that happens to us anyway. When you choose to uh, accept that, you know, the responsibility that that's what you that that's what you put into your life, or not, doesn't change that you did. So it's really important for me to keep never looking back and just accepting. So, so there were times, of course, that you just go, you pinch yourself. I mean, you know, let's, let's be honest, you know, but, but, but recognize that moment when you go, yeah, okay, you turn that into gratitude, turn that into divine gratitude, turn that into, okay, I'm blessed, but there's a reason. And, and put your ego back in, in your pocket. And, and keep moving, you know. Um, so the milestones that, that, that we did enjoy from time to time, but it wasn't really until Michael died that I was almost forced to stop and look back and I was kind of, whoa, I never wanted to do that, you know. But then there was a period where for about a few months I was going, wow, wow, you know, shit, I don't know. We got, wow, you know, and so it went through all that. But but I just want to pull it back in what you're saying about the Madison Square Gardens. It's just another, it's another day at the office, you know. Um, and we have, we all have those moments. There's, there's epiphanies that happen to all of us, but there's also beautiful moments that happen in our lives. We don't, we don't recognize them because we're looking or our heads kind of decoding it in a way that we're not really fully getting the gift. If that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, we're sort of rationalizing it too much rather than <laughs> just being, being in it. Yeah. Yeah, or we judge. Uh, yeah, I, I appreciate that. You know, um, you, you talk about. Um, there was a moment when you decided to leave the city, you know, and, and take off. And um, it seems to me that there was some significant shift or, or something happened. And like, I know you don't want to look back, but I'm really intrigued by that kind of decision to kind of pull up stumps and, and head out um, away from the city. And, and it, I think it was around what, 2015, 2016 was that, can, can you talk to yeah. us a little bit about what, what that moment was like and, and what was going on for you? Sure. Well, again, it's something I projected. You know, I've always wanted to do that. I mean, I always wanted to, especially because I, I, I've always been homesick all my life. Given since I was kind of young, um, I really, really loved being around my parents and, and I loved home. But I was often and running really young. And so I kind of missed my teens as, as a teenager. I don't really know what that is like, except that, I'm probably acting like a teenager my whole life. I think that's 
that's the outcome of that. But because I was traveling so much and touring all the time and there was so much legwork with, with distance traveling, you know, um, and I'm always in a different hotel or, or somewhere different, I just longed, longed, you know, always longed to be home. And I would always project that I really wanted to have some acreage and, and to be um, just around trees. And uh, so I guess what I do is I go there um, and I see the future as a place to visit. So w w when it's time to go, then then I, I pretty know much what to expect because I brought it into my field. Um, so there was a there was there was a moment around the, what you said around the 2015 period where you know our kids were sort of uh, five and seven, you know maybe even 2014, and we had you know, a beautiful house in Sydney and and uh, had um, another beautiful house um, after uh, um, a few hours south down in Jervis Bay, uh, and that's where I was kind of projecting we were going to go south from Sydney. Um, but then I realized, you know, that we just need to get out of the city. Uh, Sydney, I'd always loved Sydney. It was always the favorite city in the world for me. I lived in Hong Kong and all different wacky places, but something shifted and suddenly it wasn't a nice place to be, I didn't think anymore. And that was just only for me. So I, we, we realized I'm not going to work in, in town in the morning at CBD. You know, why are we in the city? You know, we homeschool our children. I actually, my wife homeschools our children. <laughs> <laughs> um, not to take any credit on that whatsoever. You know, I'm really blessed about that too, because that's that's amazing. That that's been the most beautiful thing. So we just thought, well, maybe this is our time. This is let's just move up, uplift. Um, which was pretty hard, but I'm really glad we did just a shift that we can do, you know, any time in our lives. But it just requires a bit of courage and and um, and and faith. It's all good, you know. And so, what I couldn't believe was how much better life was, you know, um, like fifty to hundred times better. Mm. Like thinking, why didn't we do this sooner? And my my wife rolls her eyes, like you know, we've talked about this forever. But we we both we both. When we first met, I mean, we just uh, we just celebrated our seventh wedding anniversary, and uh, we've been together over twenty one years. Um, but that was one of the first things we we wrote down one time, one night. We're having a bit of a um, fun night, and we wrote writing out all these things we want to achieve and do as a, as a as a team. And this and this was one of them. So it was just a question of time, Asha. I just think I'm so proud of every human living here on, on this earth this time. Um, it's the best time to be alive. Well, yeah, and I was actually going to just refer to what you said at the beginning, which is just that it's the best time to be alive. So um, maybe, my friend, that's a beautiful place for us to end, you know, because it is. It's a beautiful time to be, be alive. And we've come kind of full circle in that beautiful um, cyclical fashion, which you mentioned at the beginning too, back to that very fact that it is a beautiful time to be alive. And um, it's a beautiful opportunity to speak with you john i really appreciate it my friend thanks asher for what you're doing and i'm, I'm sure you bring a lot of comfort and um uh, to, to all those who, who uh you know uh, need some companionship and some fellowship mm. thank you john